What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Core Conversations for a Monday. It is a freestyle Monday, so I'm looking forward to you all joining us here live on the screen as we talk about intentionality and touch on a few different topics based on the guests that we had last week and some of the things that are going on. So thanks for joining us. I'm just going to do a couple of housekeeping things and we'll get this rolling. If you're watching this after, know that you are more than welcome to join me at any point on screen and then we can talk shop here. So let's get this going. Bells, Ma, how are you? Natasha, hey, what's going on? Sonia, BC. I'll ask mom. Now I know your handle. What's up? All right, so we're gonna get this going here in one second. I just wanna get a few housekeeping things going. So we have Andrea Mitchell is our podcast drop this week. Hello, Misty. like subscribe and share all that fun stuff if you guys have any if you all have any online classes workshop stuff coming up please let me know uh, misty i saw dragonfly is hiring looking for plies instructors if you want to um jump on and share with that you can you're more than welcome to tara rose i see you as well this is our freestyle, this is how we do. So if you wanna join me, this is your practice run. If you feel like you don't have what it takes to talk for an hour, you wanna join me for five minutes, you can do that. If you have something coming on, you wanna promote it, please come on, just let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you wanna join me on screen. And uh, yeah, I got some stuff to talk about, but I wanna just like give it to you all as well. So do something else here. next time all right tara uh, misty you want to join me on screen if you're not busy you can pilates pre what's going on i had some fantastic guests last week um yes and yeah the virtual studio stuff's gonna be really exciting i'm really stoked for that that's not okay all right we'll message after i mean i still would want to see you but hope you're okay <laughs> phone troubles yes well let's discuss the topic that I have for us to talk and float around is one that was one of these things that came up in different ways all last week. And it was the notion of intentionality. I had Ian, Andrew Mitchell, Kwesi, uh, Jackie, and then Brian Harris, and all of these different people from different walks of life talked about intentionality in different ways. Ian, from a training perspective, as a physical therapist coming into the Pilates space, he was talking about it in one way. And then um, with Andrea, we're on a real deep personal level talking about how we, um, and man, in so many ways, I'm still kind of rocked by it in terms of just the conversation, how rich it was talking about past relationships and doing things 
like she was sharing the story of her family situation for her daughter, some of the moves she did intentionally to cultivate relationships. Quasi talking about journaling on Wednesday and how he has a book called Rise where he talks about some of the struggles that he's gone through being incarcerated, working in the police force and uh, his journey battling depression and now at a place where he has this book, he does public speaking and his journaling, he has a journal that he's developing that's coming up where it has prompts and it allows us to look intentionally at how we live our days, setting those intentions and those goals and then reflecting on, on them at the end of the day and just bringing together all these different pieces. And then lastly, Brian, uh, Brian, actually before Brian, we had Jackie as well with her Good Citizen LA and building relationships and building uh, this sense of um, community and motivating people with simple things like her loops that she has a business and how you're using something external to be a motivator internally for people. All these good things that were coming up and all of it comes back to intentionality. Are we living our lives on purpose? Are we making the most of our days? Are we pausing to be reflective in those moments when we're really, really busy? Can we carve out time if we can't afford time to take a vacation? How do we, like all these things. So I've been, I have a lot of stuff spinning in my head this morning and it comes back to intentionality. So my question for you is what does the word in, intentionality mean to you? What does it mean to be intentional with the way that you treat your clients, your spouse, your family, your friends? Do you live on purpose with it? I'm just throwing that out there, whatever that means for you. Because I'm going somewhere with this. Shout out to Plate and her gear, my Swakati hoodie. Kind of hot now, it was a little chilly in here before. One of the things that we're talking about with this intentionality piece was with Andrea, was talking about with our clients and how we start our conversations when they come into the room, getting a sense of feeling, how they're feeling and where they're at, so that, you know, and asking the how are you question. And the how are you question is not just a how are you, good, okay, well we're gonna start with our roll up. Like actually pausing at that how are you to listen to where they're at today. We have our rock stars who come in and then they have like a stressful weekend and then they're just not ready to move. Or we have these people that are, all these different things, there's so much stuff that happens from a trauma perspective on a grand scale trauma, big T trauma, or a small T trauma, which I think is all the same thing anyway, because it's all relative to where you are in your own headspace. All these things come into play, so that how are you determines the, the course of your conversation, the course of your workout, and how intentional you're gonna be with that time and space. So it's not like I'm trying to race through the repertoire and it doesn't matter where you're at, we're just gonna move today. There will be days where that how are you turns into a 45 minute conversation, a stretch and have a nice day. Or times when that how are you turns into, okay, maybe you need to move in spite of those things. And that was a conversation I was having with Andrea, which from a trauma perspective, she was presenting that the body can't physically move if the headspace isn't ready and we need to respect that people need to sort of some things in their head before they move. True. The other side to that is there's times when people are so in their head that it would benefit them to move because movement has a healing property that if they could just get their body moving and create some momentum and some inertia with that movement, then there'll be a break mentally. So both are true, so now it's back on us as the trainer, coach, teacher, instructor, whatever we call yourself, to read that, recognize that, and move on purpose with that. Let me get to Tara's comment here. 
Yes, definitely trying to these days. I fell into a new positive, new purpose recently. Can tell you more about that later. That I didn't choose from, uh, didn't choose, but running with it to help others. I love that or organically choosing to run it. Like you, we have to embrace things. I'm, I'm chewing on that word embrace a little bit more these days too. Because there's certain things that come that we didn't script, but they're here, and we can fight it. We can we can kind of just go with it or we can actually embrace it and maximize its potential. Write down the word potential because I'm going to circle back to that as well. Uh, thank you for the hoodie. Yes. Pilates hoodies IG. What's going on? Listening to people's stories, right? And then the, the fine thing with listening to people's stories is, and from a counseling perspective, this is the thing that I get worried about, is that we listen to people's stories and we think that we have to solve their problems when they give us those stories. What do we do with their stories? They put that in the chat. What do you do with the story when people give you their story? What if you say, how are you? And then they go into something that was way over your head. What do you do then? just stretch today <laughs> like what do you do at that point when you're just like oh, I can't uh, that's like you need a psychologist at this point we all have that point with someone who we trust who trusts us and they just go blah they just bleed all over you this thing in my background is bothering me right that sort of thing happens as well Just be there for them. When in doubt, refer out to. Don't need to fix people. Refer out. I like that little saying, when in doubt, refer out. Now, funny that you say the word refer, because that's one of the things I was chewing on last week, is that I have decided that I am not going to, um, this <laughs> too funny. Maybe if you weren't in your pajamas, you can come and just like share exactly what you're talking about. Um, referring out. I'm all about connecting people. I'm all about finding and understanding the scope of your practice, understanding where my level of expertise begins and ends so that I could do those things really, 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 really well and find someone who is equally passionate and competent in their scope that I could hand people off to. Now, what I was saying is that, my, I said this earlier last week, that I am a, I'm thinking about this and just changing the way I speak about it, talking about intentionality, that I'm choosing to stop using the word refer. I'm choosing instead to use the word connect. And if I could back up from that a little piece, there are certain people that are already in my world from a professional standpoint, like a chiropractic, sports medicine doctors, athletic therapists, physiotherapists, RMTs that are already in my circle. I know them, trust them, registered, uh, registered uh, dietitians. They're in my circle, they're my people, I trust them, I know them on a friend level, and I know how passionate they are about people. They're already there. I'm connected with them, so what happens is when I meet with someone, I recognize that they need a dietitian, I connect them with Noreen and say, like, here's Noreen's number, I've connected you, we'll have a conversation, make sure that you're all good. And what happens from a business perspective is, when you connect people, there is a continuation of service that happens from me to Noreen, me to Oliver, me to Mike Dabrowski, that is just a continuation of care. When I refer, what happens is that there is this gap and if I'm referring to this person out there, the consumer, the customer thinks, okay, well, what other options are there? If you're referring to them, maybe I can find one on my own. Maybe there are some other options out there. Maybe there are some other people that are skilled in that skill set. So let me look for one. I've got one referral from Martin. I'm gonna find a couple on my own and we'll find out who's the best. 
So there's this little sliver of space when you refer people that's not there when you connect people. Relationship building. I have a relationship with you as my client. I have a relationship with Noreen, sticking with the dietitian example. So that continuation of care is like, this person's in my circle, therefore they are in your circle because we're all tight. As opposed to like, you go to your doctor and he refers you to an orthopedic surgeon. You don't know that person. They just, that's just the person who they refer you to. And you may have a buddy who says like, hey, I have this guy who worked on my son and he's really good too. And you go to them instead of your referral. So maybe I'm just un I'm unpacking this in a different way, but like I just think that if you're thinking about it from an intentional perspective, I'm choosing to stop referring people and to start connecting people with others so that they can feel like they have this circle, like a professional athlete of people that are gonna help them to maximize their potential, whatever they're putting their hands to. So that's the way that I'm looking at it. And tell me what you guys think about that. What's your thoughts on that referral versus connecting wording? Is it just, is it just semantics to you or does that make sense in terms of the mindset of the connecting versus referring? This fly is bothering me and I'm not even cool about it anymore. There's always a bit of delay, so I just put that out there. Yeah. My, um, I have a colleague who is in tax, and he talks about that from that perspective that they're, they're, they're challenging that wording in the tax world when they're referring because there's, there's that same gap in service creates opportunity for you to lose that business. We have a little bit more of um, a connected world in the, in the Pilates world because it is so... Hey Blossom, um, because it's so intimate in terms of that, it's not like we're just like exchanging numbers. So there's a little bit deeper connection, but still that, that wording has some kind of value to it. So just think about it. So son is coming, a team effort when you say connect versus refer. Exactly, and that's, that is exactly it. I think of it like, you know, my, my clients uh, sometimes laugh at me when I call them athletes. I, I say like, well, you know, this, this, that's tough because you're an athlete. I, I, I treat everybody like they're a professional athlete. Um, yes, and I should design for there too. It sounds like you're maintaining the relations rather than than I'm moving on. Exactly, because if I say I'm referring, it's like, I'll see you never. This person could continue to do what I'm doing, whereas this is a continual dialogue. Um, but anyway, so back to the athlete point. So I treat everyone like they're a professional athlete. So if you look at a boxer, they're gonna have a conditioning coach, a boxing coach. Right, MMA is a perfect example. An MMA fighter will have a boxing coach, a jiu-jitsu a jiu coach, uh, you know, a grappling coach, a conditioning coach, a nutritionist, a doctor, a cut man, all these different things. They have this team of people around them. I want every one of my athletes to feel like they have a team around them. So I will make sure they're connected so that this whole network of people, like if you're with me, you're with Oliver, this person, this person, this person, this person, this person. So that's a team around every one of the people that I work with. And we should cultivate that for all of our clients so that they all feel that connected. There's a value add when they know that you're like, that's all the stuff that you get when you sign up to work with me is that you have this team now around you that walks out, you know, on fight day with you, you're surrounded by your people. These are the people that are in the background making sure that you can get this stuff done. That's why I call it connecting as opposed to just referring. I'm not referring to out, outsourcing to someone outside of your circle. You're connecting to someone else within this circle. That makes sense? If any of you like to join me on screen, I just mentioned a few things there. If you want to join me on the screen, give me a thumbs up and I'll invite you to come on and we can continue to unpack this intentionality, referring versus connecting, um, team efforts, all these things we've been talking about so far. If you want to join me, give me a thumbs up and we'll get you on the screen. Let's keep it going.
team approach is, is definitely it. So I'm fine to just lean into this or to move on. Hi, Camilla. So this next topic, let's talk about potential. I, I can't divulge too much information about some of the things I've been working on in the background, but I've had some opportunities that have come up where they've been fantastic opportunities and it speaks to collectively where we're at, where many of us are doing a lot of work in the background and it's culminating in some fantastic opportunities that we need to explore. So I've applied for a few different jobs and I've been invited to, to enter some conversations with some groups and I've had some fantastic opportunities that have, have kind of been laid in my lap so I've been exploring them. Some of them come as a result of these conversations that we have and, and it's been amazing just the amplification of, of your voices that is also helping me and, and it becomes this, this great organic growth that we're all elevating ourselves on. That being said, every time I explore these opportunities, it makes me think at the same time, wow, that's a great platform. Wow, that's a really powerful group. Wow, that's a great opportunity. And those things do align with who I am and what I love to do. However, at the same time, every time those opportunities come up, I go through this moment of grieving and that moment of grieving is because I feel like the things that I'm presently working on haven't reached maturity yet. The things that I'm presently working on have not reached their full potential. And because they haven't reached their full potential, as much as I want to chase after and embrace new opportunities and new, ch new challenges, there's a part of me that wants to finish the thing which I have my hands on right now. That whole finish strong Friday thing, like that's just not a slogan for Fridays. Like I feel like I need to finish strong in everything I put my hands to. So the challenge for me, as I'm challenging you now, just to think about is potential. And what does it mean to reach your full potential? I look at the studio behind me and I think Misty is still in the room. I was sharing earlier last week how my conversations with her and then we start talking about micro businesses and boutique studios and stuff is what triggered the thought to make this 70 like 170 square foot room behind me a Pilates studio and a broadcast studio in, inside high act and training and shout out to Andrew and the whole team there and we've, we've crafted this and we built this but we built it and launched it did our grand opening during a quarantine so we, the city, basically the province of Ontario, opens this Friday for the first time. So I haven't actually officially opened yet. But this has been growing. We've been doing amazing things, as you see right here. All of these things are fantastic. And there are thoughts that, that germinate. And then these, these small seeds become plants. And now we have this little sapling of a tree, of an oak tree or a bamboo, something that's gone down and built some roots and hasn't grown yet. And then someone comes along with a new opportunity and it's like, wow, that's going to pay a lot. Wow, that's a great opportunity. Wow, I'm going to have a great platform. Wow, that's a bit of a drive, but that's totally going to be good. And then I grieve the fact that I haven't reached my potential with what you see behind me or with this conversation that we're having right here. How far and wide can this podcast grow? I have a team that's working in the background and we're at almost... I think four or 5,000 views on YouTube. And now it's like, okay, now it's reaching the threshold where it's gonna be monetized. And then stuff that's happening in the background, I have my ninja who's up, who's doing all the uploads for all the YouTube stuff. Viewership's going up on that end, and then I'm gonna drop all that for a new project. You feel like I haven't reached my potential here while moving to the next thing. 
So I'm just, I'm having this internal struggle where I will explore everything and I will chase after and I will do all these things, but then the last thing hasn't reached its potential yet. So I'm just throwing all these things out just as I'm thinking about what it means for us to reach our potential and what it means also for my clients to reach their potential. Because everyone's on a journey. I want to see people reach these different checkpoints in their success as my athletes. So all these things come into place. I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready to let go of all these things. As much as I want to explore the next thing, am I ready to move on? to that next thing has this thing reached its full potential and then if you take that down one more level that's exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to our own physical bodies and training and then we have these conversations please put anything in the comment section as we're going I'll jump back to it as I'm, I'm just rambling this morning when we start talking about our physical bodies and then there's talk about skinny and fat and strong and like lean bodies and all these different phrases that become trigger words and cancel words and stuff like that, for myself and for my training and for the people I work with, all I talk about is potential. All they talk about is are you maximizing your potential for your body for what you want it to do? Is your body in its place where it can perform at its top level for what you want it to perform? Not what it looks like compared to someone else on Instagram. I don't want your teaser to look better than so-and-so's teaser. I want your body to be able to, you know, be able to run around at the cottage or chase your grandkids or play soccer, you know, on the weekends because that's the only sport that's allowed right now in Ontario or whatever the case is. Can your body do that to its best of its ability? If it can't, then I will challenge you with your sleep. Then I will challenge you with your fuel. Then I will challenge you with your mindset, all these different things. So I'm not shaming you for eating the wrong foods. I'm not shaming you because you're not getting enough sleep. I'm challenging you because you said that your goal is such and your potential won't be reached unless you drop those things. So don't ever read anything that I'm putting out there like you're not good enough. I'm saying you're not reaching your potential if that's not the path that you're gonna go and get to where you want to get to. So that I just want to throw that out there because I'm, that word potential has so many different levels to me and all those things tie into it. So I just throw that out there. Talk amongst yourselves. Tara Rose says, and sometimes the universe forces us to slow down and switch gears. Right, exactly. So Tara, what you were saying earlier about like going in a different direction and just going with it, we need to just go with it sometimes. And in going with it, then we realize that this is maybe the path that we're supposed to be going on. This is something that we need to forsake that to get to there. I'll share a little story for you as you're doing, as we're kind of talking this through. There's a big box gym that's right across the street and it is a lifetime athletic and it is the first lifetime athletic that came to Canada. I was working as a, what's going on, Andrew? Andrea? Um, I was working in my own business, Personal Victory, and I've been running it for many years, and this building opened up. I decided to just throw my name in the hat, apply for a job. And as I went for this job, went through the first round of interviews, seemed good. Second round of interviews, I was like, okay, this really looks interesting. I really want this. And then by the time I get to like the third or fourth round of interviews, because there's so many interviews for this assistant manager role, assistant department head role, I was like, I really want this. And as I kind of just went with it, I just, you know, like I said, just casually threw my name in the hat or just threw a, you know, application. The more that I explored it, the more I wanted it. And the more that I wanted it, the more I was able to let go of some other things and make some pivots to make it happen. And then by the time it was all said and done, I embraced that role and that really changed the trajectory of my whole business. And I kept my business running, but shelved it, did that. And then that's been something that stayed in the background. So I've learned a lot by like what Tara is saying. I just kind of went with it. And then the more I went with it, the more I embraced it. And the more I embraced it, I realized that this is where I need to be. And the more I realized that this is where I need to be, the more of my actual potential within it came out. So that dialogue and that movement is what I was talking about. And there's times that you do that and you, and you forsake all to chase after them. There's times that you grieve where you're supposed to, where you were because that's actually where you're supposed to still be.
Good to see you, Lisa. Kate, hi. Thank you, Misty. Once again, if anyone would like to join me on screen, you are more than welcome to press that request to join button. I would gladly have you on the screen to talk instead of texting. Um, Lisa and Andrea, we have been talking about potential and intentionality and all kinds of warm, fuzzy stuff. Son's comment. Perhaps it's perspective. The turmoil you feel may be better regarded as what you're embracing rather than what you're losing. I believe potential is evolving and can be stifled if we don't true recognize as such. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Lisa, full of garden dirt, so I have to decline. Pilates, Pete, what's going on? You're right. Uh, perspective is everything. I mean, I can look at it like, what am I embracing? And you can look at it, what, is I, what am I losing? And that's, I think that's a healthy conversation to have with ourselves at every point. It's like, well, what's the potential and what's the potential loss, right? Like, that's, that, that should be the dialogue that we're having in a healthy way as opposed to an unhealthy way of just embracing something that's unhealthy or, um, in my case, wanting to run after the next thing without actually passing every test on this level first I find I, I catch myself in that spot am I am I looking for the next thing because I want to get out of the character building opportunities let's call it that that are here waiting for me at this level and this stage of the game like going for an interview and then finding out that they're deciding to go with somebody else. There's a sense of relief, because now I can dive in deeper on the thing I'm already doing. That's a confirmation I'm supposed to be here. Let's chase hard after it. Let's do this. Let's get some more clients. Let's build this. Let's work on that. Let's partner with this person. I do that. But then there's this pause of, but that hurt. <laughs> like, I just got rejected. They just said, you're not good enough. So you go through that whole piece of, okay, let's regulate all these rejection stories that like hit up on your old past traumas and blah, blah, blah. Process all that. Shelf it where it needs to be shelved, file it where it needs to be filed, and then move on with your life. So it's funny how all those things come into play to get us to a place of being stronger and more intentional and to reach our potential to help others to reach their potential and all that warm, fuzzy stuff, as I said before. It's all good. It is all good. It is all good. This is good stuff, everybody. I have another topic too, but I want to just let this kind of just sit out there for a minute. Hey, Madison. Andrea's comment is, I think sometimes we reach for what we think we should do and not what we truly connect to, right? That process, that's, I, mean, I agree with you, that's, that's a great like, commentary on what happens. So what do you do when you're in the middle of that? How do you actually decipher between the two? That's a conversation that I have with myself um, too much because I don't know if you know this about me, but I am the charter member of Overthinkers Anonymous. How you doing? 
Uh, if there's any other members in the in the chat, please uh, just wave your hand so we can say hello and acknowledge you. That's exactly it, right? So you think these things through ad nauseum and bounce between the should do and truly connect to. Tara Rose says, I have learned lately to listen to my gut and not always my head. I am regard to what Andrew said, letting things come to me rather than chase them. <laughs> yes, yes. Reform your thinker. There you go. Nice. So she's in rehab for overthinking. That's fine. Um, implies Heidi IG. Got a hand wave. Concur. Indeed, as Misty says. I think it was Ian on Monday. I think it was Ian. He was talking about um, how must be. We were talking maybe about, we were talking about Misty and we were talking about that. We love your indeed. When you drop indeed, it's proper. Um, so that's that's where I'm at with that. The overthinking thing is something that I'm always going through and yeah, you would see a whole barrage of comments if my wife was in the comment section right now. Yeah. Get out of my head sometimes. Good stuff. Any other comments on that? Because I have a question for you. It's not really a question, more of just a, a thought and a reflection. Because the answer is very, like, I know the answer to it, but I, was just, I just want to throw it out there just for you to think about as well. And for you to listen to within yourself next time you're in this situation. I'm stalling because I feel like someone else is writing something. Kwesi Millington was my guest on Wednesday. He is a former RCMP officer, police officer, went through a really traumatic situation, was incarcerated, and uh, he, he shares a massive story in his book of how he's gone through a lot of things in this world and he's in an amazing place and has a beautiful family and spends his time talking and supporting others. He shared this crazy story in like 30 seconds of what happened to him. And we talked about what is your backstory and the question I had is, how does your backstory change based on your audience? What aspects of your backstory do you choose to share with your different audiences? So he was saying, well, he shares this piece with this group and he talks more about the incarceration with, with, with first responders. He talks more about the mental health aspect with young people and stuff like that. So it just got me thinking about our story that brought us to where we are today, professionally, personally. And when we're in different settings, how we share that story and what aspects of the story do we share with others? I thought it was interesting to just listen and listen to yourself when you share a story, how you got here, what you're going through, how you're dealing with your trauma, how you're dealing with your successes, how you're dealing with your failures. What is your backstory what aspects of your backstory do you choose? I'm just throwing that out there. Tara Rose said, very good question. Thank you. That's uh, Kwesi. Thanks to Kwesi for throwing that out there for me. It was fascinating. I mean, I, I listened to, I, I've heard him share his stories so many different ways. He used to have an organization called, uh, a, a, a business called Story Share, where people would go up and share a five minute story to inspire the crowd and people resonate with the story and the next person comes up. And it's a quick, like lightning round story share thing. And I, I spoke there before, I've seen him speak. He's a dynamic speaker. So he, he pulls out different aspects and different elements of his story to connect with his crowd. 
But on the show last week, he he just gave the whole story in thirty seconds. Like, how do you do that? And it was it was like enough that you just want to ask fifty thousand questions off of it. So within that that story that you share, are there pieces of the story? that you never share. <laughs> Need to get better at that and be less verbose. Well, yeah, exactly. You will think about it. Like there's so many pieces to your story and we in our own heads think that every piece is important because it is, but is every piece relevant right now? Are there pieces of the story that you never share? Hmm. Tara is saying, I recently started sharing pieces that I haven't in the past because they, I didn't think they were important, but they turned out to be the main drivers. So what's an example of that? And you don't have to share the actual thing, but like, what's an example of a time where you thought, let me omit that, and then reality is that that's actually a game changer for somebody else. And then for Lisa saying, yes, I actually don't share that I was in a motorcycle accident because I'm afraid people will ask what happened, and then I'll have to tell them I don't remember right yes there's right yeah I mean that is I'm sure Andrea can talk to like having worked in the trauma field there's certain things that we just don't want to revisit and it's not like we're, we don't want to share with them it's like we're not ready to share it um, and that's a significant piece of the puzzle And Tara's comment is, I had an accident as a child. I don't really remember it, but it triggered a rare disease in my jaw joints that I've had for 30 years. Fun times. I agree with Lisa. Do you feel like there will be a time and a moment when it's appropriate for that story that you've never shared before to just come out? Even before you're ready? Or do you think it'll be like one of those things where you're like, okay, you know, I'm ready to just jump into this piece of it. Trauma shows up in dreams. is not so fun. Yes, we die. Like we're running right down that road of trauma and, and basically what's our emotional connection to these stories, right? That's our own work that we always need to continue to, to run with. People. Yes, Lisa, Tara, Tara saying, let's be people mean well, but don't realize when they, when they shouldn't, shouldn't, ask certain things and then Andrew's comment says yes I think sharing what you have not digested or worked through can lead uh, to feeling re-traumatizing to feel re-traumatizing yes I agree right exactly is it even re-traumatizing or is it just traumatized like it's not re because you're you, you never actually moved on from it in a sense it is below the surface but it's always been there so it's not like it was like gone fully healed and came back it's just it's there and it's below the surface or 10 feet below the surface but it's there right it's interesting you know like there's a doctor strange in a marvel movie said like we never overcome our demons we just learn to live above them that was one of the lines from a movie we never overcome our demons we just learn to live above them and i wonder how true that is for for us um and andrew's comment says sharing what we have moved through helps others connect and feel like they're not alone. Absolutely, that's exactly it. And that's why I feel like, um, that's why I, I share a lot of these things. I, I put stuff out there and I, it's not being vulnerable as much as it's just being real with the fact that I'm living through these things. And if my life and my experiences 
are things that can inspire someone or challenge someone or give someone hope, that's worth it. Like, I, there's nothing that is off limits for me in conversation. Um, and if you've been around long enough to hear the same divorce story or the same child story or the same whatever story, sorry if it bores you, but hopefully it's going to help someone else. Uh, Tara's comment is, and then post, and then posture shaming applies land due to it. I almost quit going through workshops and classes, but I can't help it. But share what we have moved on to. Yes, exactly. Yeah, those are all great comments, everybody. Like, those things all tie into it in such a, a beautiful way. What is going on, Scoop Pilates and PT? So Andrea, your um, our conversation is going to be the podcast drop for this week. So I'd love for all of you to, um, if you haven't subscribed uh, to the podcast, go into my links in the bio and do that. Uh, and this that will be the conversation that comes up for this week. Our conversation was so fun and um, very you know very insightful for me. Um, I hope that it continues to just drive your business for people to see how awesome you are and that they can connect for whatever they need, whether it's movement or like that mental movement, um, creating space somehow that you, uh, you're you doing a great great work there, as you all are. So I think that that's fun when I can highlight people and just learn and um, my wife watches these conversations and she can see when I make these authentic connections with people, like with Philip or um, with Andrea, where it's just like, yeah, these are like my people. Like they're not just like, I guess that I'm to say hi to, talk to him for 40 minutes and peace out, never see you again. That there's like people that you make these authentic connections with and they keep, you know, keep showing up, right? Like it's not like they just watch a couple shows just to like get some game tape so that they can perform. They're actually connecting with the community and we all grow and all get better. So much love to you, Andrea. Misty Lynn is a perfect example of that. Like I love all the stuff that you guys do. Thank you, Tara Rose. My uh, last guest that I had last week has been really, was really fascinating. He was from a different world than our Pilates world. His name is Brian Harris. He has the Harris Foundation, which is like a, a sport, a youth sport consulting business. And he's figured a way to scale that out and to be this bridge between a high school counselor and like an NBA agent sort of thing. Now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm realizing that that's what he's doing because he's helping people to map out their journey, building relationship enough for them to understand what's happening in their social network, their real social network, not like, like social like Facebook, but like, you know, what does their mom do? What does their dad do? Is their dad in the house? What are they doing in school? What are their grades like? What is their performance in sports like? Are they getting enough game time? What do they need? Do they need a mental coach? Do they need a massage therapist? And he can just pull all of these resources together under his group and meet that person at the point of need. Much like we do in the Pilates world, he's doing that in the sport world and is helping young people to map out their academic student athlete careers. So our conversation was around relationship building. Our conversation was around the opportunities that we had or may not have had as young people and how he uses that to connect. And I was pulling away from that some, like some really, really cool key things for me as a Pilates person, as a business owner, as a studio owner, in terms of those connecting points. And how do I build bridges with someone like him so that I can get those people that I really enjoy working with in my space and um, and 360 applies online is doing the same thing with all their community work. So the piece that comes out of it, I, Alexis, is the sense of there's times that we're building these relationships and building these connections. And it's not about trying to build my empire as much as it is about coming alongside other people in their building of their empire, so to speak. Um, so I love what, what he's doing. I love what 360 Plies Online is doing. Even as I open up in the show, Misty Lynn Cawthon is hiring for her virtual studio. So if you're a Plies instructor and want to get some classes in, submit your resume, do your teach out with her or however the system works, and 
make those connections. Sign up for Pilates 360 online, see what they're doing, and help them grow their businesses, help them grow their visions if that's something that's aligned with you. And it doesn't necessarily have to be about building the Martin Reed Show. I can apply and teach one class a week with Misty, or I can, um, you know, contribute all these different things. And just even though I'm trying to build my space here, that's opening up my other worlds. Uh, and that's what Brian was talking about. Like, how do we do that with strategic partnerships? Um, so it's not necessarily like these people are all on staff, but he's cultivated these relationships with people and built them up and has them now in his pocket. So we have that same circle of care and the same connecting and networking thing that we were talking about earlier, but living intentionally, you have these intentional relationships that you connect people with. So all of these things were tied into like beautifully all throughout the week. And it's now for us to live it out. It's now for us to be able to look at all these things and say, okay, so this is what I'm doing, but then this is what this person is doing too. How can I help them? And by helping them, I know they're gonna help me, but I'm just definitely gonna be there and just authentically be there for them, knowing that that will come back to help me. So Brian has like captured that in a way that is beautifully done. And if I could layer in the dialogue about our skin tone, there's many things that in the black community that we don't do well in terms of partnerships and building things that have some lasting strength to it. As we see in other communities, like the Jewish community, for example, where they build, like they have streets, corners, like the city of Toronto doesn't have that, Mississauga doesn't have that. So for him to build that and it be lasting with a foundation and have some really big names in his strategic partnership network, he's doing a great work because it's not about him, it's about his kids and about really getting everyone to focus in on the vision. So I love that, I'm inspired by that. And I hope that we are doing that and we can be inspired by vision and do these things and not make it about ourselves and our show, but about our communities in that way that he's doing in the sport conditioning world with youth, young athletes and recruiting and like we are doing in our Pilates world. So shout out to him and shout out to all of you that are doing that. And I love seeing these partnerships that continue to grow. And yeah, let, like follow everyone that's in the chat right now. Like follow all these people and let them grow as you grow. That's all I have to say about that. That was just my thoughts on Brian. And the funny thing too, with what he's saying is that, I don't wanna incriminate Brian with saying this, but like a lot of times we as black people don't think too far long term. Like I'm thinking about plans for this week and stuff like that instead of planning five, 10 years for my business. How are we mapping out that far down the road? And so he's thinking on a long-term longevity thing like that, as well as the, the day-to-day. So I don't know where that came from, but I just really feel like I need to um, personally continue to cultivate those relationships. And if it means for me to, here we go, create some accountability with it, for me to sit down with 360 Pilates online and say, okay, I'm gonna plan this and let's set a meeting two months from now to do X, Y, and Z. I never think that far ahead. I'm thinking, what does the next three days look like? What does the next week look like? What does the next plan look like? Whatever, I'm not like mapping out the next 18 months for my business all the time. There'll be days when I go on a retreat or something and then and do that, but on day to day, I'm not thinking that far ahead. So um, I'm now starting to think that way and um, I, I thank you to all of my guests who, who make me better just through the conversations that we have. Thoughts? As we approach 54 minutes of me talking and no one joining me on air, so I just sing and dance for 50 minutes. It's all good. All good, my friends. Tomorrow, Kathy DMAC. It's gonna be on, so it's gonna be fun chatting with her. Purpose and perspective, what's up? Hmm. Good for you. Think about your five year goals and where your business is headed. Yep, that's the way to do it.
So this is saying, my husband runs a business and always pushes me to set those five and seven year goals. Yeah, it's good. Well, it's great to have someone in your corner that helps you with that and keeps you focused on that. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you got your, uh, some thought provoking mental work in while you're getting that workout in. I'm sure I'll see the post for that later as well. We got to get together and do a, a workout at some point too, Phil. That'd be solid. That'd be fun to do. Um, this is completely unrelated. I'm just going to share something. I don't know if my brother is still in the chat here. I'm just checking. And he's not. But. Funny. Um, you have to know where you are and what you exactly to achieve those goals. Absolutely. So, a little funny story just as I'm finishing up on here today. My brother's back in town. He's uh, So, he came over to my house yesterday. And... He said something to me that if you said it to someone else who was more sensitive, uh, they would be fighting worse. But for me, it was actually a compliment. So we're out in the backyard, I'm barbecuing, whatever it is, doing my thing. And he looks at me and says, I thought, I thought you would be this, like, I thought you would be skinnier, uh, tinier, I think he said. And I was like, what do you mean by that? He was like, well, doing all that Pilates stuff and then your post about your shirt sleeve being a little bigger, I figured that because all you're doing is Pilates that you'd be smaller, but you're actually still pretty jacked. It's like, yes. Can you imagine, like that was superficial and we were laughing, but he thought I would just be this little slight, petite, frail person from doing Pilates, but I still have some muscle mass. And I was laughing because like, you can't say that to anyone else. Hey, I thought you would have been skinnier by now. What, like, what do you do with that? Can you imagine as a fitness professional saying to your client, hey, I thought you would have been skinnier by now? Might be an HR thing. But because he said it to me in that context, I was like, that's what's up. No, I'm still training. Yes, I'm still doing it. Of course, I'm still working hard. And this Pilates thing is something that is keeping me stronger and I can go throw down weights and then come back and still do Pilates and keep my mobility and stability and strength and then continue to build. So shout out to Pilates, shout out to doing weights still. We ain't going out like that. I'm not gonna roll in here like some 112 pound yogi just because I'm doing Pilates. So I'm just, yeah, I just wanna say that. <laughs> Um, right, you can say it to his family, you can't say it to anyone else. So true. So true. Anyway, I thought it was funny just like hearing that on two levels. One, yes, I'm still doing it. And two, yeah, I would not have a business if I started with, I thought you would have been skinnier by now. So that is all we have for today. Yes, Darren, keep it strong. Get that flex on. And thanks for joining us. We have, um, yeah, Yo Yoga Cat, I believe is her handle. I'm not sure what her handle is, but got some fun people. I'm gonna do the posters today and then we'll get it going with, some, where are my people this week? Let's enjoy that family sibling stuff. Allison Skews, that's it too. Yeah, so Allison is on Wednesday and Jill Hinson is on Friday. So we got some fun people. And the last thing I was gonna say with Allison, she has a new studio, much like what I have here. So check this out. The conversation that I had when I didn't have a studio with Misty, which triggered that thought of a micro business, is something that inspired Michelle, get to work, Michelle Sims. And she's like, you know, what? I'm doing it. I can do a micro business. I can do a boutique studio. I'm doing it. And then Allison also heard that story. She's like, you know what? I'm going to do it. So as a result of all that, we have three people now who are starting this business of having a studio within a studio, business within a business. So all of these things happen as a ripple effect, all because of these conversations we're having here. So we're going to bring in Allison on later this week, and we're going to talk about where she's at in her business. So thank you all for cheering others on and making it happen. I have a client, so I got to run. I just really appreciate all of you, and that's it. We are out. Have a great day, everybody.